welcome to another great exciting time with me in on those states elections like we actually know they had the local government elections yesterday and we have been gathering a lot of information so we have someone that will be giving them more, more insight of the issues and the reaction of all the elections he's no other person but he was a former he is it was a, he's still the APC chieftaincy in Ilaro, the federal local government, and he also veered for House of Rep in 2011. So we have no other person but Honorable Razak Obe. So it's so good to have you here today. So nice to have you. Thank you. Good, good morning. Day. Yeah. So how would you describe the whole event of the uh, local government um, election in your local government and in Undo State yesterday? Okay, uh, I must say that the election in itself uh, was, a, was a watershed for the people of Ondo State uh, because local government elections uh, have not been coming. We've been having caretaker committees upon caretaker committees and that has undermined democracy at the grassroots level uh, to level where uh, we should, it should serve as a crucible of development for politicians uh, who may start from ground zero and grow and advance to real politics at higher levels. But unfortunately, our state has not been lucky. Since the time of uh, Dr. Mimiko, uh, we've had uh, a situation whereby local government elections don't hold, so people don't participate in politics at that level. And people just get appointed. So having the election in itself is a turning point. And we do hope uh, the outcome is going to further uh, entrench the tenets of democracy. People will know that the people uh, are the masters. They are the ones who determine who, who lists them. And how they feel about government is reflected at the polls. So yesterday was a very great day, and uh, we are happy. Uh, we had the elections, and we do hope after three years, when this tenure expires, the people are coming in, there will be another tenure. That there will not be the punctuation of caretaker committees and and uh, all of the arrangements that I don't believe uh, should be in any reasonable democracy. So now on that platform, you see, this is a turning point for the Udundo state people. Are you looking at this turning point for the governorship um, election coming up soon? Okay. Uh, first of all, we should thank Governor Roti Miyakiri Dulu, who made this happen. Uh, that it, it should be commended for stepping out of the what we call the the normal uh, proud to this time. Uh, we should thank him for making that happen. And the governor himself, as you must have seen, being in Ondo State, has demonstrated leadership by bringing the fruits of democracy, the dividends, as our people will say, to the people. Uh, if you see all of the places you've uh, visited, you see the quality and the, the quantity of roads constructed. Uh, you will know that it is a clear departure. It, it doesn't dramatize leadership. Uh, he actually delivers sublime leadership. And he's been known to be a governor with some rich values rooted in honesty. Even his adversaries will tell you uh, Governor Keridolu is pragmatic. He, he, he says, uh, he does what he says and not the other way around. And uh, for someone like me, I normally don't jump out to support a politician uh, for any reason. Of course, uh, my, my type of politics is not the, uh, what I would call the pepper soup type of politics <laughs> that you just look for where it's you can grab something. Uh, I have a very high level of independence in my political thinking and permutations. So in this case, he has sufficiently uh, convinced me that he's a leader to follow, and hence my support for his uh, candidature for second term. And if you check what it is in the state, you know that the people of own those state are prepared to give him that second term, the second term in office. Uh, politicians will always say whatever they please. 
uh, I can tell you that politicians uh, are just out for just one thing, political lever of governance. That's what everyone, is, everyone seeks. So sometimes someone, you can see when they move from one party to the other, the party they vilified yesterday, they'll be praising today. That test is just a game. So that's where when we see Nara Kuni Oluwaro Timi Akiri Dolu in the political term, we tend to embrace him because uh, he's someone that looks into your face and tells you no. And he's bold enough to say yes when he wants to. And when you're able to put forth a superior argument, he's also humble enough to say, yeah, I used to think like this now, what you are saying is better. So that's the leader we want to have in the state. And we know that with him, we'll move to the next level. But we know that some of the political, one of the political candidates they have for this Undo state election, he actually swapped from one party to the other, from one other party. It's not only in this state, even in Edo state, the APC and PDP, they're all in different positions now. So yeah. we are looking at um, the candidate's um, credibility for all the parties, the Zenith Labour Party, the PDP party, and the APC. I don't know if they have for any other one, but what? how do you feel, or how, what do you think that um, the um, um, your governor for the APC candidate is able to have that they don't have? Okay, uh, well, I, I, I don't believe uh, in speaking ill about anyone in, in, in politics. Uh, but what we can just say is we can contrast them, as you have rightly uh, indicated. How is Governor Ruti Miyakiri to do better? Uh, one, uh, I mentioned the, his uh, rich value of honesty. Uh, that's not common among politicians honesty. who believe in angular crookedness, zigzaggedness, <laughs> manipulation, <laughs> one up man shape. Uh, Governor Ruti Miyakiri doesn't believe in all of those. Uh, that sets him apart, and part of why he got the governorship in the first place. And uh, comparing him with the people on the on the political horizon, uh, you will see that he, he stands clearly taller, sturdier than they because of his antecedents. We are talking about someone uh, who served as MBA president uh, in this country. You know what that means? Uh, leading all of the lawyers in the in the, in the country of Nigeria. Uh, we are talking about someone who served before as a commissioner uh, in this state, and we talk about someone who has led meritoriously these, these three and a half years or thereabouts. So, uh, if you are comparing him uh, with someone who has no uh, executive experience than being a commissioner uh, and nothing more than that, and the other person, deputy governor, by the by the kindness and. Uh, Opportunity provided right. by Governor Ruti Miyakiri Dodu. Okay. So you see that he still remains the, the, the person to beat uh, in, this, in the coming election. And if you check what he has done, uh, he's rich to all of the news and credits of, of the state, uh, all of the zones and districts. Uh, you, you can but purse and say, well, uh, if election will be by voting and people are going to demonstrate their appreciation of what they have seen under his leadership, there won't be anyone in that political system that should stand any chance of competing, not even up to 50% mm -hmm. of, of what he has to offer. And you can see that the, the, the new system, the so-called Thought Force, Zen Labour Party, is actually a breakaway from the PDP. So it's like you are, you are having a PDP today that is fractured. <laughs> Perhaps, uh, if you check what happened, the, the exit of the deputy governor did not make any difference. Uh, perhaps one or two leaders in his, in his uh, corner of the state, uh, when it comes to the generality of the state, you, you, don't, um, you don't find any politician that knows what, what obtains hmm. uh, joining in, in such a chase. So, but the people suffering the biggest blow right now, they are the PDP people, because uh, a lot of people used to be there uh, which will be on their side, oh, are well, mm -hmm. So we, they are cleaved, maybe 60, 40, or 50, 50, right. or no. 70, 50, 30, however the cleavage is, but they are cleaved. What that means is the APC is going to continue to maintain some uh, high level of superiority oh, right. uh, over all of those other parties.
because of his position. Yeah. Right now, we're going to be looking into the senatorial district, which is the central, yeah. where we have the, the senator goes to the PDP, and uh, the House of Rep is rightly divided by SDP, ADC. So um, for the forthcoming governorship election, is APC going to be taking over the seats? Or why was it so? Uh, sometimes in politics, there is what we call the domino effect. Uh, the Buhari uh, Articles election of 2019 was such that uh, some people felt down the south that they could have an alternative to Buhari. Uh, of course, uh, when you look at Buhari government, some people who do not really understand the mechanics of governance and leadership and who are unable to see the progress we've made, they go for the face value. They, they, they try to pull the economic quagmire that we found ourselves, uh, which was wreaked actually by the PDP, their years of uh, directionlessness. When those, when the tsunami, you know, when you, when you have, when you have earthquake at sea, tsunami does not show up immediately. Mm -hmm. you, it, it might never come 12 hours later. It depends on the extent, uh, the depth at sea. So, but if the earthquake has taken place, the tsunami is inevitable. What happened then is the PDP had caused all of the evil. They had brought the country down to ground zero. Uh, when it was time for APC to take over, the tsunami waters are showing up. So for people who were not intelligent enough, I'm sorry to use that word, uh, to see the truth and understand that this is not what he's doing, that he had done so much in that time period, they were easily misled. You can see PDP, they, they live and uh, they, they survive on lies and criminal manipulations. So they successfully convinced a lot of people to go the way of PDP in that election. That's why they, Buhari didn't win the state. Article won the state. Uh, and um, you can rest assured that in the subsequent election, mm -hmm. it's no brainer. Uh, PDP cannot, will not, will be unable to win this center again. Remember, uh, APC is most likely to pick the presidential candidate of the party from the Southwest in the coming election, 2023. When that happens, what you're going to find for APC is a massive hurricane. I mean, we are, we are looking at a situation where Votes in the southwest will be 90, 95 percent for APC for all positions, either House of Reps or Senate or Presidency. That is what we can expect. So let's not just uh, do so much permutation Don't that 2023 is <laughs> solid for APC in the state and in the southwest. So, um, what are the qualities? Just one quality that you know that um, the candidate. Because let's talk about uh, Akiru Dulu because he's one of the key person that is going for the APC um, election, yeah. I mean, governorship election. What is the credibility and one of the key attributes you know he has to sustain him to come back as the second term governor for the state? Just one word answers that. Truth. Just one word. Uh, you, you see someone who should, given the political climate and how people behave, who should normally say, let me do what they want. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do what the everyday politicians want. He does what he thinks is best for the people of Ondo State. That's why you see people who are supposed to be lieutenants and associates in the government, uh, some of them, not many anyway, about two of those, they stepped out, uh, aside. The reason is, it's not the type that is going to do what's not right, just to stay politically correct. So when people, you know, all those state people are known for uh, what I call no nonsense We are known for being upright. We are known for courage, being able to stand for what we believe in. So those are rich values. So we have a governor who is bold enough to represent the collective value of all those state people. And that's why if you throw him uh, out there a thousand times, people who have witnessed the extent, the, the depth of his uh, performance in the past three and a half years, they will choose him again and again and again. You can see 
after the primaries, people thought APC was going to just set itself ablaze. Uh, but we have seen we've not had any system where primaries of that scale, uh, pr uh, you know, primary of that scale was held and unity followed. The following day, key figures in that election, they all came together. Doctor, uh, we have. Uh, Mr. Dikekemeke, we have a Chief Olusola, Law, okay, and um, Honorable Ife Yudeli or Engineer Ife Yudeli, and many other people. They all came together. So we have been, we are facing an election where political cannot engines in, in, in uh, mechanical engineering, a, 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 a cannot engine is an engine that has 100% efficiency. Mm -hmm. You find such in people like Chief Olusha Law, okay. They are coming to say, we are with you. Senator Boroughface, another preponderant political force in Nondo North, is saying, we are in with you. In the South, politicians of, of color and class are saying, we are with you. In the center, in the, in the center, the same thing. So you have the Minister of Niger Delta of State, he's from here throwing his weight, and many other political figures. So this election uh, is one election that would be difficult for opposition. To, to do well in. Mm -hmm. it, it will be hard because where do you get it from? The critical mass you don't have, the people on the street you don't have, the political uh, infrastructure required to deliver an emphatic victory, you don't have. Only Governor Akiri Dulu has all of those. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing an election uh, where we respect him to have 60% of the total vote cast and the others are going to share just about 40%. Wow. So now... I want you to speak into the camera and talk to the people come the day of election. As they go out to cast their vote, what they should have at the back of their mind? Uh, I will say to the people of Ondo State, uh, we should go to the poll and uh, cast the same with posterity in mind. Let's have a government that is going to advance the education program that has been commenced, a government that is going to set uh, the infrastructural growth of our state uh, higher and take us to where some advanced countries of the world are right now, where the average road that people uh, use, the roads are good and all those portals are gone. Let's vote for a governor that is going to establish and sustain the culture of honesty, where we will do what we say and not the other way around. Uh, we should have a governor that is going to work for us, not the ones that will rule us. The one that is going to advance our course and take us to the next level, not the one that will drag us down. The one who will spend our money on, on things that will change us for better, not on things that are mundane and transient, that after his tenure, we can't put our finger on those things any longer. So that is why we are advocating and we are asking the people of Ondo State to vote Arakuri Rotimi Akiri Dolu to be governor for second term. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for having us here. You're welcome. Okay, next time we'll still bring more of Undo State's um, election. Bye for now. <laughs>